welcome to the Be the Ultimate Assistant podcast with Bonnie and Vicki. Hello, everyone. I'm Vicki Sokol Evans. And I'm Bonnie Lowe Craman. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? I am great. How are you doing down in Texas? <laughs> I'm great. You almost sound like you have a Texas accent. You were I here. took it on. Just for you. <laughs> you came down for a visit. Uh, we were at Dell teaching, and uh, we also had our Be the Ultimate Assistant workshop here in Austin. And now you've got a tiny Texas accent. I love it. Very, I did it in homage to you. <laughs> Thank you. So what's been going on since our last, last podcast with Dr. Croshaw? Yeah, it's been a busy time. The mo one of the most exciting things that's happened is that we launched the Speak Up Pledge website, uh, which I'm super excited about. It's uh, a global initiative to encourage both assistants and managers to have improved communications between them. Uh, because as I've seen it, as you and I have traveled around the world, speaking up is the number one challenge that was facing us in the workplace. So um, we've had, uh, we're, our goal is a million pledges by Labor Day. That's I know awesome. it's a little ambitious, but we you know, we're going to do it. We could, we could definitely do it. What countries, so we've, because you've had pledges all over the world, what countries mm -hmm. have kind of responded to this big call to action? Well, certainly in the United States, it's catching on big time and, and companies are sending out, you know, emails to the to their colleagues and saying, hey, let's do this. But we're also in, in London and France and Germany and Italy and, uh, and even in South Africa. Yeah, and I saw that picture on Facebook from the South African uh, team that, that took the pledge. Tell, tell everybody about that one. Right. Um, one of the women at this one company took it upon herself to create this movement inside her company. So there's this great photo. She gathered 10 of her colleagues. They printed out their pledges. They laminated them. They took them out to this gorgeous field with all these beautiful flowers, and they're all wearing pink shirts, and they're holding up their pledges so proudly. And, and you know, while that it's so fun and moving to see that photo, What's particularly moving is what's behind the feeling, and that is that they know that speaking up is so important, and the messages they've posted on Instagram. So any listener, I urge you to go to speakuppledge.com, post your picture on Instagram, speak up pledge, and mainly put your minds between you and your managers on the importance of, of speaking to one another and having the conversations that need to happen. Perfect. Can we? We'll definitely share that picture too. Make sure we have a link yeah. to the picture because it's adorable. I love it. Um, so, and so inspiring too that you're reaching people all over the world that uh, yeah. that really need this. Congratulations, Bonnie. That's well, great. thank you so much. And, and you, I my gosh, you I can't even I've stopped counting the places you've been since we talked last. Yes. Yeah. All all over the world. But my um, most exciting uh, event really is I'm going to be teaching Bill Gates's team in a couple of days. Um, their administrative team, and so that's exciting because they realize you know even using their own technology they can enhance their their skills, and that's what we're going to talk about today. How no matter where you are, uh, technology wise, that there's always room for improvement, and uh, so we've got uh, two big episodes ahead of us today. Yeah, next month. I, I think we need to take notice that that yeah, I think some people might assume that if you're if if you work at the Bill Gates Foundation, you know, he's the my goodness, the foremost one of the most foremost people in technology that everybody knows everything about technology there. And that is simply not the case, is it, Vic? It's not. I mean, yeah. I mean, even um, you know, we've gone into Dell. Dell is a mm -hmm. tech company. Um, I've taught at Microsoft. I've taught Microsoft employees how to use Microsoft technology. Um, same thing at Google. I know we know a lot of Googlers, and they still uh, get trained on the technology. It's right. um, it's it's everywhere. It's you know, just putting technology in front of us is great and we can we without any training we can get to and, and the, the the number is 13 percent so we can get to 13 percent of an application's capabilities if we're just uh put in front of the technology any kind of productivity tool things like that but 
it's really raising that productivity level when you go out and seek additional training um, in the relevant technology that will help you do your job better. And right. so every, I mean, and you know, kudos to the Bill Gates' uh, administrative and support team that they definitely see the advantage and benefit of, of uh, and the value of coming together as a morale event and learning and how to use the technology at their fingertips better, stronger, uh, faster, and deliver results quickly and kind of get rejuvenated about the technology. So. Absolutely. Well, there's so much to talk about. So let me yeah. set this up for you, Vic. That what we talked about is that these two episodes are going to be about what it means in 2015, moving ahead to 2016. What does it mean to be tech savvy? It's a phrase that all of a sudden we're hearing all the time. Um, and it's a huge topic, and I know it, it sparks a lot of emotion in you. So, so get us started. In this first episode, we want to talk about what is it, and and what is the landscape? What are you seeing all over the place? Talk yeah, to us. I, I, and, and I'm hoping for the second episode that we can focus on how to become tech savvy. Um, but I, oh, exactly. we're going to do that. Yes, you've got to do that. Yes, we have to do <laughs> that. Leave us hanging. So here's why I. Uh, while I get kind of riled up about the the phrase tech savvy is that um, it, I and you've seen it too about seeing the words tech savvy on resumes and seeing them on job descriptions and uh, in tech savvy I have 15 certifications in Microsoft technology I'm a Microsoft certified trainer but if you ask me if I'm tech savvy I personally don't know I know that I'm tech savvy in productivity, in collaboration, and in the cloud and database. But when you're talking about social media, I have people on my team that are more tech savvy in the social media uh, realm of things. So identif saying that, that you know, if, if someone says, I'm tech savvy, I, I, it's hard for me to grasp, understand exactly what that means for that person. And same thing with a job description that says we need a tech savvy assistant. In fact, before the podcast, we went on LinkedIn and just did I just did a search for tech savvy assistant, and several uh, several job postings came up with the title we're looking for a tech savvy assistant, but they weren't specific enough in the job description to say. Is it Mac or PC? Uh, or do they use Google Apps? Do they use Microsoft Office? Um, do they need to be social media savvy? Do they understand privacy and security? And I've identified seven core tech savvy skills that assistants need, as well as five specialty skills that, that people can focus on if they, uh, depending on their industry or depending on their Role and um, and we can cover grab a pencil. Our okay. listeners should grab a pencil. Okay. So you want me to cover those now? Is this a good time? Yeah, I'd love okay. for you too. I think that's that's we're yearning for that because you know tech savvy. It's 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 a catch-all term. It's a catch-all. I mean, could it be more vague? When, right. When, Right? Yes. So get specific for us, Vicki. Tell us okay. what those those are. Okay. First, I want to tell you what tech savvy means based on, go what, on my Google search. So if you just type in tech savvy into Google, you get an ad it's an adjective, and it's it, this is the definition. It says well-informed about or proficient in the use of modern technology, especially computers especially computers. Now you don't see the word devices where I think most people think they're tech savvy because they know how to use a device. They know how to set up a phone. They know how to you know, post a picture on Instagram. So uh, especially computers, that's so vague. Um, the other description or uh, definition I got when I Googled it, uh, Cambridge Dictionaries Online says that tech savvy means knowing a lot about modern technology, especially computers. So pretty much the same exact thing. Modern technology, especially computers, is what we're getting. Um, that is way too vague for my, um, for my taste, especially as a technology instructor um, and someone who trains assistants and also someone who hires assistants. And Bonnie, you, in fact, you help place assistants in different positions as well. And we'll talk about kind of what you see on the job description. But okay. I, know, I know we're eager to see what the seven core skills are and five specialty skills, so let me jump in there. Um, and I will post, we'll make sure we have these 
12 specific skills uh, in a link below. But the seven core tech skills, tech savvy skills, to me, I've identified this over the last, uh, I guess, 20 years. The first one is obviously productivity skills. And that is spe specifically speaking, being able to use Microsoft Office proficiently. And the average user uses only 13% of an of ca application's capabilities, whereas somebody that is certified in Excel or Word or PowerPoint is at the 80%, is 80% or above mark. So productivity can include Microsoft Office, SharePoint, communication, OneNote, Evernote, Google Docs, any one of those tools based on wherever you're working. So And Vic, Vic yeah. you shared with me the number of people in the world who use Microsoft Office. Yeah, so let's take a look at numbers. that. So I've got this if you can search called Microsoft by the numbers, there's a website and um, it's it's news.microsoft.com slash by the numbers and we'll include the link. Um, there are 1.2 billion people who use Microsoft Office. And to give you some perspective, that's one in seven people on the planet. One in seven people, including babies. And including, I think we better. I think we better know this this technology that yes, and then elderly, it. like in, in remote <laughs> locations. So 1.2 billion people, one in seven people use Microsoft Office. Wow. Um, we're going to find out how many people use Google Apps. I'm really curious about that, so we can compare it. But I I do know that there are some offices. And we've even provided training for some offices that are migrating from an office, from a Microsoft ecosystem to the Google ecosystem. Um, so that's why understanding productivity is a central skill for assistance. And you have to understand when you're looking for a position or even offering a position that you have to define what ecosystem the company works in so that you can find the most appropriate person for that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously training should be provided if, if necessary. So that's one, one of the seven tech, not tech savvy skills. Uh, the second tech savvy skills is collaboration, that it's important more and more we're seeing, and even you and me, Bonnie, when we are working even together um, preparing for this podcast or if we're or putting together the, um, our workshop, our two-day workshop, or composing a proposal to go into to a company for training, that we share documents online and we collaborate and co-author together while we're on the phone so that we are working in the same document at the same time and that saves us time. That is an essential skill for assistance um, all, around the, all around the world is that you have co-authoring skills, you're able to use digital notebooks like OneNote or Evernote, you're, um, you're able to obviously instant message uh, most people know how to instant message, video chats, being able to collaborate in an online setting, no matter what device you're on as well. So it doesn't matter if you're on your computer, or on your tablet, or your phone, you should be able to co-author and manage all of that, regardless of what device. So that's collaboration. That's number two. Number three is the cloud. Office 365, OneDrive, Google Drive, the intranet, your internal intranet, Salesforce.com, any one of those online cloud-based software programs that your company uses, it's important to be up to date uh, on those skills because you're able to access files remotely on any device, uh, any time, and then understanding, this, understanding the security level. Like, well, since I'm on the intranet, I can't access our documents on my mobile device, but I can through a VPN through my computer. So that's important to understand. That was number three, right? One, two, three. Yes. Uh, four is platform. I don't have these numbers. I'm taking notes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and again, I'll have the I'll have the graphic for everybody um, posted on the website. And uh, platforms is important. So if you if this is a Microsoft ecosystem, like if this is a company that uses Microsoft products, they're probably going to be Windows based. We know everyone at Dell is Windows based. There are no Mac users at Dell. We have some users at Microsoft that use um, Macs because they might be on the Office for Mac team um, and they might be testing things. We're seeing this a lot where companies are, are, are kind of split between Mac and PC. So we're also seeing and hearing from a lot of assistants around the world that uh, more and more jobs are requesting Mac and PC skills or maybe more Mac skills than PC. So it's important to understand the platforms. And even if you're just a, a Microsoft shop, like your company just uses Microsoft, 
products, um, understanding the differences between Windows 7 and Windows 8. Most companies are still on Windows 7 at this point. This is uh, spring of 2015, but we're going we're going to see uh, more and more companies move to Windows 8. But by that time, by the time your company moves to Windows 8, there's a chance that you'll have Windows 8 at home on your home computer because when you get a new computer, you're on Windows 8. The next one is apps and gadgets. So being able to use tablets and smartphones and understanding my manager has an iPhone, I have an Android, and how we're able to communicate uh, with each other and to be able to access and be productive on any device. And then obviously the apps. Tell everybody about the exercise that we do in our Be the Ultimate Assistant workshop about the lunchtime app. On day two, there's an exercise we do during lunch where we have everyone, it's kind of a networking lunch, we have a little bitty project um, right. where we talk about apps. Talk about a little bit about that. Right. I ask that everyone make a list of their top favorite apps, gadgets, websites that they use every day that save their life. And, and what's so interesting, and then we collaborate, we, we get those lists all together. So my effort is that let's choose something like Uber, you know, the car company. Uh, I'm sure they're very happy for this plug right now. Um, <laughs> where for somebody it, that they use Uber all day, every day, but for another assistant, they've never heard of it. It's new news. So my, my goal is for us all to be working from the same A list of top resources for one another. That, that the, you know, one of the things we're seeing all over the world is that there's too many assistants functioning in silos and, and being alone with their, you know, they may have some great contacts, but they don't have all of what's available to them. Uh, and, and so the list that comes out of that exercise, my goodness, can range from 200, 300 apps, resources, websites. It, it's pretty extraordinary what these uh, top assistants come up with. Yeah, I mean, and, and we get and, and they're specific, not specific to assistance, but they're so helpful for assistance. And so yeah. um, it's such a great exercise. It's, it's it's very apparent to me when we do this every single time that they're, you're right. Like one person's Uber is like, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't even know that existed. Or like right. Waze, W-A-Z-E, uh, my favorite kind of maps app. Um, I can't live without it. And so it's, and there might be some people who don't know about it. So we're constantly right. needing to be educated about the, the latest apps. And same thing with gadgets too, like the power, the power bar and the power bank and these little things, the little tech savvy device, little devices that you can, you can use to attach your phone or if your, your battery dies, it's important to have all these different gadgets. So um, that's number five. Number six is hardware. And that's been around for a long time where people ask us, ask assistants to fix the paper jam in the printer. And but it's important to understand how to connect to devices wirelessly uh, via Wi-Fi or hotspots. Um, so I think hardware is always going to be an essential skill. Um, right. and then, Just briefly tell what happened that you're, at, you went to a conference recently. Oh, yeah. So right. that's, yeah, that, that one I have under, um, I do actually have that under AV somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Probably yeah, no, in the no, next no. list. Sorry. No, no, no. That's probably it. That's actually it. Hardware and AV. Because I went to a speaker conference, and granted this was a room full of speakers, but the speaker was at the front of the room and needed to get to a different slide or needed to get their slides connected and projected on the screen, and the assistant was the one that was able to get that person's project, you know, uh, presentation projected. So there are a lot of times when the assistant is required to, like, can you just be in the room so that you can help with the AV and make sure I'm connected properly? So I think knowing AV and hardware, all of that is essential for every assistant because that is so valuable to be that one person in the room that can make mm -hmm. sure that the meeting goes off well. And then the last core skills really important is privacy and security. Um, privacy with respect to social media privacy, which is a class that um, we te I, I teach. We teach it during the Be the Ultimate Assistant uh, two-day workshop. And um, security, making sure that all of your devices are secure, that when, it, if um, it ever gets stolen or lost, that you know that everything is secure, that there's no compromise or risk of uh, sensitive company data or your data um, 
being accessed by anyone who has that device. So those are the seven essential skills. I'll, I'll kind of breeze through the specialties. The five specialties would be social media. So if you're working in an advertising agency as an assistant, you're probably going to be required to know social media, have a Facebook account, LinkedIn account, Instagram account, and so on, and be using them because it shows that you're relevant and transparent. Mm -hmm. um, consumer technology, some of your jobs, especially for personal assistants, you might be in charge of cat uh, cataloging the photos and videos and music for your family or employer, um, or if you're an assistant working in a corporate environment, you might be in the marketing department and needing to catalog a lot of the photos and videos for the company. Uh, that's number two. Three is database management. So if you have database skills, so you might, might be working with the marketing department or with um, the CRM or HR department to help process or get the data ready for reporting. And sales data, marketing data, HR data, consumer data, all of that kind of stuff. That's number three. Number four for specialties is digital marketing, especially for VAs if you're a virtual assistant. Um, you might you might specialize in online marketing, SEO, WordPress, informational marketing, email campaigns. I know our first, you know, your first hire, Bonnie, for an assistant, you wanted an assistant to have those skills. Same thing on my end, too. It was helpful that my assistant had those digital marketing skills. It's right. obviously not going to be a core skill for everybody, but if you want to specialize in that, um, certainly. And then the last one, the fifth uh, specialty would be project management. So, um, you know, having a tech savvy assistant and project management would be such a great specialty to have. Right. Um, one of one of the students in our last uh, workshop said that the profession of being an assistant is a profession of skills, a and we, I thought that really summed it up so well that it is it is a job of skills. A and my goodness, you just named seven plus five, and included in all of that are so many skills. So, so yeah, Vicky, that was a great list. Yeah, I'd love to. Do you know, just real quick, do you see why I get frustrated when I hear the word tech savvy? Like, oh my I, gosh, I, uh, I would urge anybody listening, especially if, if you're an assistant, to really identify what skills that you specialize in, even the, even the core skills, and include that on your resume. Uh, again, I'll, you'll have the seven plus five skills, and I would include those categories on your resume and be very specific about what you're proficient in realize that proficiency means about 13 percent. Um, unless you can prove with certification, then your I mean, certification proves that you're at the 80 percent mark. So if, if you consider yourself proficient, you're at the 13 percent at least. And we'll talk probably in our next episode, like first of all, how, how do you assess yourself? How do you find out where you are percentage wise? And how do you how do you um, increase that percentage? I also urge anyone that has that manages an assistant that uh, hires an assistant as a manager to really identify what tech savvy skills that that person needs for that role, and then for the person in the HR department recruiting for that position or staffing agency, be specific as well. Like what tech savvy skills do they need? Do they need PC, Mac? And if they need Mac, be specific. We have both, Bonnie, you and I have a colleague that was hired as a personal assistant with Mac skills and two days later was let go because she didn't have the right Mac skills. But it wasn't her fault. It, was, it wasn't defined clearly what the expectation is. So that expectation needs to be defined clearly in, in the job posting in the the uh, job right. requirements and so that everyone is on the same page and and so on so I know you okay. have questions for me right <laughs> well so Vicki you you've identified this this list and I think it's very uh, in you know, comprehensive and probably a little scary for people to hear and you and I certainly know around the country assistants who are really scrambling to get themselves back up to speed in certain areas for what they're all of a sudden needing in their particular job role because we've seen you know it, it's a great time to be an assistant in the workplace right now but it's also very complicated and technology is part of the reason why so Vic you've been so many cities around the United States in the last months and also cities around the world you've been in London and Dubai and Australia 
um, tell us what what are you seeing? What, are you seeing trends? Are you what are you hearing and seeing that our listeners really need to know? Absolutely. So so we're in in 43 countries right now. We've got students all over the globe. And uh, we also go into corporations, and we get calls every single day about uh, training needed. And so we interview every single one of our uh, our engagements, our point of contacts for an engagement, and identify what everyone is using. And the the biggest trend right now, the number one one of them is the BYOD, bring your own device. So a lot of companies are allowing. Um, employees, especially managers and executives, to choose the device that they want to work with. And so more and more executives are are moving to a Mac platform for themselves, even though it's a Microsoft um, company. Uh, let me let me give you real quick just the the percentage of fortune five hundred companies um, using kind of the Microsoft ecosystem. So there's according to Microsoft, um, as of the last couple days on the Microsoft by the Numbers site, 80% of Fortune 500 companies are in the Microsoft Cloud. And at some point, we will be doing a survey of the uh, assistants around the world to find out the percentage of executives that are on the Mac platform. Because I'm really curious about that, because we are seeing a trend where more executives are going to the, to the Mac and yet their assistant may still be on, on PC. And so when the executive has a question about something's not working in Word or Excel on their Mac, they tend to go straight to the assistant. So there is a demand for the assistant to understand Office for Mac and, and how that works because if something's not working, we, they don't know, the assistant doesn't know if it's an Office issue, an Office for Mac issue, or a Mac issue. You, um, right. We don't know what to troubleshoot without without training for that assistant. It's it's going to be really challenging for him or her to support the executive in, in that respect. And a real time waster too, right? Yes, exactly. I, it eats up so much time to do that. It does, and and so we've had uh, companies, global companies, offer Mac uh, computers and laptops to the assistant. The assistant will try it, and then more and more we're seeing the assistant turn the Mac back in because they're just not as productive as, as uh, mm. the Windows laptop. And I'm not saying that's across the board, so any of you on <laughs> any of you with Apple might disagree with me on that, which is fine. But I'm seeing I'm saying the the companies that we go in and train in, a lot of the assistants are handing back their Mac, and, and so so we have that mixed environment. That's that's okay. number one. Number two is the mobile devices that um, that you know it's between Android and Apple and Google. Obviously, the three big players are going to be Microsoft, Apple, and Google. And you're going to have a mixture of desktop, laptops. You're going to have a mixture of tablets, and you're going to have a mixture of smartphones in those three areas. Not only between the assistant and the executive, but also a mixture between what's happening at work and what's happening at home. So. You're so right, Bonnie, when you talk about it's never been more, a more exciting time to be an assistant, but it's never been a more complicated time. There's so many yeah. combinations of things that we can work on, and, and that's why it's important to be in the cloud because no matter what device you're on, the cloud, you can access the cloud on any one of those devices. Right. Yeah. Wow. I'm just so glad you're helping to make sense of this very complicated landscape we have going on. Our listeners will be happy to know that we're going to be recording in a uh, part two of this conversation with you, Vicki, because Are we, we done? just kind of scratch the surface. Well, we have to wrap up. I'm sorry <laughs> to have to wrap up. Is that, but is that pretty much the, do you have another trend? I have one more yes. trend. I just yes, want to, yes, yes. tell us. The last mm -hmm. trend is the tech, is really what hurts me to a core too is the having a, a technology migration or upgrade without accompanying training. Right. Um, this oh. happened between the Office 2003 to 2007 migration. That was a huge drastic change in Microsoft Office. And with 1.2 billion people using Office, when I poll the audience, probably 
less than 5% of the audience will raise their hand for those that got that actually received training. And so that's a huge loss in productivity and money for the companies whenever that happens. So so that's an, that's another trend that there's not training. So a lot of work. We have a lot of work ahead of us. It's really, sure really do. complicated. So I just my goal is to get that 13% up. Um, to 50%, 25%, 50%. If you're inspired to get certification at 80%, that's even awesome. So our next episode, and, I'll tell you how to do that, how to get it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's what happens with a little bit of training, which is what happens at our Be the Ultimate Assistant workshops, where we're, you know, assistants in 2015 have to be equally proficient and comfortable with the soft skills of, of communication and organization you know, the people skills, but also th without the technology skills, the hard skills, they're not going to make it, not in this in this workplace. Well, and we saw the demand, right? We saw, we, you know, originally it was three hours of technology during the workshop, and then based on the survey responses from the attendees and our alumni, they says, no, we need more. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're, up to four. we're up to four hours. So people are yearning for this. There's, there's yeah. definitely a need for this. So Starving. Yeah. So, Vicki, I, I thank you for this, uh, for part one of this uh, conversation about tech savvy, what tech savvy means. Do you have a, a final thought for us? I do. I, I, you know, typically you give the closing quote, and I have one of my favorite closing or quotes uh, regarding technology. Well, I guess regarding any kind of learning, and it's from John Wooden, who is uh, our one of our favorite, um, I guess, people that we quote a lot. He yeah. is the former UCLA uh, basketball coach, and his quote is, "It's what you learn after you know it all that counts." It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. And that resonates with me because um, even with the 15 certifications that I have, it's those little bitty tips or nuggets of learning that I get beyond what I already know that matter to me. And in my sessions, there's one called, you know, I didn't even know how to delete a table in Word. And when I found that out, I'm spreading the word and getting so excited about how to properly <laughs> delete a table. So I get excited when I learn new ways to save time. So um, I hope that those of you that are considered experts will, you know, be inspired to, to even pursue more technology learning when you can. So uh, for our listeners, we will be including the links for uh, what we mentioned in this episode. And we hope you are waiting with bated breath for the next episode where Vicki is going to be discussing how do you get there? How do you become more tech savvy than you already are? So don't lose heart. Uh, we'll, we're right there with you, and we so value your involvement with us. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Hey, everyone, we'd love your feedback, topic ideas, and questions. Visit the podcast page at be the ultimate assistant com. And thank you once again for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bonnie. Bye, Vicki. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>